Hey guys, it's JJ Pokey here, and today I have a really helpful Huntress walkthrough for someone who is a beginner, intermediate, or even a very experienced Huntress, perk-wise. This is a complete perk run over of Huntress and what perks do good on her, what perks do bad on her, and I'll give you some basic builds for every stage of mastery. Also, quick note, my voice is, um, <laughs> dying, so ignore that. Alright guys, to begin, we're going to go over the basic Huntress build. This is a build that you can do without any teachables, so you don't have to play any of their characters. You can get these perks right off the bat for free. My first recommendation for a beginner huntress would be something like this. Bitter Murmur, Deer Stalker, Spies from the Shadows, and Iron Grasp. And keep in mind, you can replace any of these perks with Huntress Lullaby if you'd like down here. Huntress Lullaby is great for gen regression, but is not a very strong perk. Now let's go over this build and how it works. Bitter Murmur will show you survivors ours for 5 seconds after they complete a generator. This is great for tracking and information. It will also help you with snipes, but you shouldn't have to worry about hitting long distance snipes from, for now. Deerstalker is a great perk because when you down a survivor, you can actually see them when they're downed, which will really help you find them, and if you have another survivor nearby, you can use your extra hatchets and try to get a second or third down. Now, Spies from the Shadows is going to be your main information perk. Though it isn't the best information perk in the game, it is actually decent. On Huntress because it'll tell you where survivors actively are. Even if you're not in chase and a survivor is sprinting or walks by a crow disturbing it, uh, this will tell you exactly where they are. And last but not least, Iron Grasp. This one can be, re be replaced with anything you like. I would just say don't stay away from Insidious. It doesn't do much in Huntress. Uh, survivors can still hear your lullaby and so it doesn't hide much. But Iron Grasp will reduce the wiggle effect by 75% and cause the time to struggle out of your grasp. Um, to increase by 12%. Now, two perks you can replace, like I said before, Huntress Lullaby is decent. As, as long as you're getting hooks in your games, it'll make skill checks prog progressively harder and harder, uh, making gen progression go down, as there's a 6% regression penalty as well, on top of my skill checks. You also have perks like Distressing, which you can use in any of these slots as well. Distressing will increase your tear radius and give you more blood points. If you're looking to farm early blood points to get other teachable perks or level up your character, Distressing is a great perk to use, but it's not very practical unless you're trying to confuse people. Alright, now let's move on to an intermediate Huntress. Let's say you have a decent amount of hours. You can hit at least 30-40% of your shots. If you're hitting a good amount of shots, especially up close, then I would say you're an intermediate Huntress. A complete beginner Huntress is going to miss most of their shots, and which is why I would actually recommend bringing a, one of these belts to give you some extra shots. It really does help. But now we're going to move on to teachables. If you don't have any teachables, then this will help you out. If you have a few, I'm also going to tell you how to use a few in the most common ones that I recommend getting first. The first teachable I recommend getting on any killer is going to be Barbecue and Chili. Barbecue and Chili is a fantastic perk. It not only does it reveal survivors upon hooking, it'll also give you plenty of blood points to go along with it, and is the best killer blood point perk out there. Barbecue and Chili is unlocked with Cannibal on level 35, so keep in mind you will have to spend $5 to get the Cannibal. If you do not wish to spend money, that is okay. You don't have to play or buy the Cannibal. You can always look in the Shrine of Secrets for Barbecue and Chili, because it will appear here every so often. Now, there is a whole new meta with Dead Man Switch. Dead Man Switch is a very powerful perk, but I will not be recommending this for an intermediate huntress just because it requires um, hooking a ton. And it is likely if you're going against decent survivors, you're not going to be getting a ton of hooks. My next recommendation is definitely going to have to be Corrupt Intervention. I still use this perk because I go against very, very good survivors. Basically, Corrupt Intervention will stop the gen rushing at the beginning of the game, blocking the three furthest generators from your location for an entire two minutes. So this will really help you slow down the game, get more pace, and prevent three gens from popping early. This is the first teachable you get in Plague, so you will get it by get getting to level 30. Plague is an original chapter as well, so you can unlock Plague for free by saving up shards. Leveling up those two characters is really all you need. You can slap on some of the free perks you get just by default. It has two teachable perks and two perks you will already have while playing Huntress. This is a great intermediate build. It has two teachables, which is not too complicated, a free perk that you get on any killer, and you'll get Huntress Lullaby, which already comes with Huntress, which is great. This build is very emphasized on getting your hooks, and even if you can't get hooks, you will be supported by Bitter Murmur for locations of survivors. With the slowdown, it'll really help out an intermediate Huntress. 
Now this fourth perk can actually be anything. If you fully level up your plague, Infectious Fright will prevent those sneaky survivors from getting the flashlight saves. Because when you down a survivor, anyone in your tear radius will scream. Though Hunters has a very small tear radius, this will prevent anyone from sitting right behind you with a flashlight in their hand. For those of you who have a lot of teachable perks and just want to start learning Huntress, this build is very, very solid. You basically have three R reading perks, which R reading perks are very strong on Huntress as long as you're decent. I'm All Ears and Nurse's Calling also work very well with this combo of Barbecue and Corrupt. I'm All Ears will show survivors auras for 6 seconds after vaulting within 48 meters of you, and a Nurse's Calling will show healing survivors within a 28 meter range of you. You have one gen perk, one chase perk, and two R reading perks besides I'm All Ears, which is a very solid balance for Huntress. Now for someone who has a lot of teachables like me, you're going to want to experiment and you'll find a build that suits you very well. If you're a very good Huntress, or you can win most of your games, you're already going to have a build that's very solid. If you come here looking for the best build, I won't be able to tell you that. The best build is what you think is the best and what works with your playstyle the best. Though, I will give you a few of my favorite builds to run in the fog. You'll be able to see I run barbecue and chili on every single one of these builds because I am always hungry for blood points. Alright, this is our first experienced Huntress build. Now, you can use this build at any level with experience for Huntress, but it is, but is designed to really help against good survivors in swifts. To start, we're going to have barbecue and chili. That's going to be your information perk. If you're a good huntress, you're going to be getting hooks frequently in most games. So barbecue and chili is amazing for information and for snipes. Corrupt intervention will slow down the survivor's progress and from in preventing early prove thyself or gen rushing. Now, Pop Goes the Weasel goes hand in hand with barbecue very well. When I hook a survivor and see other survivors on a gen on the other side of the map, I can immediately walk towards that gen, scare them off with a cross map, or just straight up scare them off, and hope they don't pop it. Now if I get there and the gen is not completed yet, I can easily kick it and remove 25% of its progress, which is huge for regression. Now this last perk is a very underrated perk in my opinion, underused, but uh, I find it very good on Huntress especially with certain add-ons. Blood Echo is a rare Oni perk. It'll give survivors hemorrhage and exhaustion if they're injured when another survivor is hooked. So basically, if I hook a survivor and everyone else is injured, everyone else will not be able to use their dead heart, spent burst, life, anything for an entire minute. This will allow us to approach, snipe, and easily M1 survivors without having to worry about second chance perks. As a slow killer, a dead heart hurts really bad, so having them exhausted for an entire minute after every hook is very very strong. Now my second build for a very good or decent learning Huntress would be this. Barbecue and Chili, Dead Man Switch, Bitter Murmur, and Blood Warden. This is a more fun build, this is if you want to go for snipes, Bitter Murmur and Barbecue together are insane and will constantly have you set up for long range, hit, for long range hits. Dead Man's Switch works very well in this build because it's easy to control gens. This is basically your gen perk. After hooking a survivor, instead of going towards a survivor on the gen and popping it, you can just throw a hash at that gen and hope they let go. Or if you hit them, they will automatically let go and that will trigger Dead Man's Switch. Now Blood Warden can re be replaced with literally anything. You can add Ruin or Pain Resonance if you'd like for more gen regression. But I enjoy Blood Warden on this build because I'm not going for a win usually. I'm going for snipes and clips. So Blood Warden's good karma if you don't do super well in the pregame. This this next build I call the running gun. It is very speedy. You have barbecue and bitter murmur for snipes, and you have Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden will increase the open time for lockers by 50%. So basically you can reload super fast and just be right back on even if you're missing a lot of hatchets. But I, I would more recommend this if you can hit more shots. It's a lot more effective, and the reload time doesn't make that much of a difference when, if, when you're starting off. I'm also putting Corrupt Intervention on this build to make it a bit more solid than the last one. This one's meant for long range snipes and just a very quick gameplay. As long as you can play loops very efficiently, this is going to be a decent build for you. Alright guys, I hope this little video helped. If you guys have any questions, please go to the comments down below. I will help you all as much as I can. If you want to tell me you're building comics, I will rate it. I will explain to you what you could change and improve it. But I know the best build is going to be your own personal opinion. So, there is no such thing as a best build. It is your playstyle, guys. 
adopt the play style, adopt, try a ton of different builds, find which one you like, and you'll be happy after experimenting a lot. That's all I can say. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.